For decades, cooking with a gas stove has been seen as the fanciest and most enjoyable way to cook. I'm here with Scott Rank in front of every chef's dream, cooking with gas. Absolutely. But are we really better off with natural gas? Climate experts and professional chefs alike say that there is an alternative that could give gas a run for its money. I love, love, love the induction technology. Today, a mind-blowing... What? Kitchen bargain. I'm Shannon Osaka, and I've been looking into two questions. First, how good are induction stoves for the environment? And second, how affordable are they for the average person? And actually, I have a portable miniature induction cooktop right here. The secret to an induction stove is that it's basically just a big magnet. And when a pan is sitting on the stovetop, that magnetic field creates little electric currents that swirl through the pan. This heats up the pan, but leaves everything around it cool. We have set our little induction stove to rapid boil, and we're waiting for it to boil. So right now, we've just boiled some water. The water is boiling. If I move it to the side, though, I can still touch this, and it's not really hot. This means that induction stoves can heat up food in a fraction of the time for a fraction of the energy. But does an induction stove make sense for you? Let's crunch. <laughs> Look too long to chew. Some numbers. We calculated that each day, an average home cook using a gas stove would produce about 0.95 pounds of carbon dioxide. Induction stoves, on the other hand, use electricity. So to figure out the carbon emissions of using an electric induction stove, we have to look at the grid. Right now, the US electric grid is powered mostly by renewables, nuclear, and fossil fuels, which are a mix of coal, natural gas, and some petroleum. When you add it all up, an average home cook would produce about 0.96 pounds of carbon dioxide every day by using an electric induction stove. So right now, on average, an electric induction stove and a gas stove produce about the same amount of CO2. But those emissions could vary a lot depending on where your state or region gets its power. For example, an induction stove in renewable-heavy Vermont would be a lot cleaner than one in coal-filled West Virginia. As our grid transitions away from coal and toward renewables, however, Induction and electric cooking is only gonna get cleaner. And there are other concerns with natural gas. When you have a natural gas stove, that gas has to be piped into your home. And all of those pipes and the other natural gas infrastructure are notoriously leaky. So electrifying your stove now is kind of like making a bet. You're hoping that the grid is gonna get a lot cleaner over the next 15 to 20 years, and you're also helping to move away from gas infrastructure entirely by disconnecting your home from natural gas. So there are climate benefits to switching to induction, but right now those benefits are fairly small. What about the financial cost? According to my highly official search of, well, the Lowe's website, induction stoves can be quite a bit more expensive than gas stoves. So if you look at these stoves from Lowe's, gas stoves go from around $400 to $4,000. There are a few induction stoves that are in the $1,000 to $2,000 range, which is the average for gas stoves. But in general, they're more expensive. Experts that we spoke to said this is mostly because of the industry's scale. They've only been commercially available in the US for a few decades. The industry is pretty new and pretty small, and prices should come down once induction stoves are more popular. However, the passage of the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act could make this technology more affordable. Under the act, low-income households can get an electric or electric induction stove fully reimbursed, up to $840. Middle-income households, meanwhile, can get half the price of the stove reimbursed. Still, individual states have to set up and apply for that funding, so this process will take some time. And at the moment, it costs about the same amount to run an electric stove or a gas stove, depending on energy prices in your area. In a few states, induction could save you around $20 a year or cost you around $20 a year. But mostly, you're only looking at the difference of a few bucks. Finally, if you go for an induction stove, you also might need new cookware. In order for your pots and pans to heat up, they have to contain some kind of iron compound. Essentially, they have to be magnetic. So cast iron and stainless steel pots are generally fine. But aluminum or copper pots might not work as well. 
Basically, if a magnet sticks to the bottom of your pan, you're in good shape. Yeah! Magnets! Oh! But there's one final comparison to make that actually seems pretty important. Gas stoves are actually terrible for people's health. When your gas stove is on, it lets off toxic chemicals like nitrogen dioxide. Outside, air pollution laws require that this chemical stay below around 100 parts per billion. Inside, a gas stove or oven can easily cause nitrogen dioxide levels of up to 300 parts per billion. That's three times as high as what would be legal outside. And even brief exposure can cause breathing problems and asthma attacks in some people. One team of researchers looked at dozens of studies on the health impacts of gas stoves. They found that a child living in a home with a gas stove was 42% more likely to have asthma. That's about the same risk as living in a house with a smoker. If you do decide to keep your gas stove, it's probably worth upgrading your ventilation system. That can be expensive, but it could be really important for your family's health. Emissions from cooking overall are relatively small compared to things like transportation, travel, or home heating. If you want to limit your carbon footprint, buying an induction stove is probably not the best bang for your buck. Something like getting an electric bike, an electric vehicle, or switching your home heating system over from fossil fuels to heat pumps might go a little bit further. But if you love to cook and want to limit your future carbon emissions, then an induction stove could be a pretty good fit for you, especially if it means you can get rid of a gas line going to your house altogether. But if you're willing to settle a little bit in the quality category, then maybe opt for a glass top electric stove. They're a lot cheaper and only slightly less efficient than induction. At the end of the day, deciding on the best stove for you depends on a whole bunch of factors. If you want to find out more, check out the links that I left in the description.